नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू द चैनल सो टुडे अ टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन वुड बी हाउ वी कैन डी कोड पी पी एम सिग्नल्स एंड जनरेट अ पी डब्ल्यू एम सिग्नल इवेंचुअली सो वी हैव द पी पी एम डेफिनेशन ऑन विकिपीडिया यू कैन हैव अ लुक एट इट बट वॉट इट सेज इन समरी इज दैट यू हैव अ सिंगल डेटा लाइन ऑन विच यू हैव मल्टीपल पी डब्ल्यू एम डेटास so in normal case for a pwm signal you would require that many wires suppose i let's say i need 8 pwm signals so i will have 8 pwm wires but in ppm in a single wire you can combine those eight data together so that's what ppm is and it is mostly used in rc industry remote control industry uh, so in that we'll be discussing it further you can have a look how a ppm signal looks so you can see that a ppm signal can be derived into multiple pwm channels eventually and we have a sync or synchronization gap in between the pwm signals in our case we have eight channels on our ppm signal line and those eight channel relate to eight different uh, what can i say uh, inputs on your joystick on your sorry flysky transmitter we'll be using a flysky fsi6 transmitter and fsi6 av receiver you can search about it online so uh, our ppm signal will have a certain gap it, in our case it would be 7 7.5 millisecond and each channel will have its own space of pulse from 1 to 8 so in our transmitter we have two joysticks two knobs and four switches so right now only six channels could be used you can extend it up to 10 channels in the same fsi6 ab trans receiver so the knob 1 and 2 are the active two channels right now and Two on joystick one and two on joystick two. RC one, RC two, RC three, RC four on joystick two, and RC five is knob one, RC six is knob two. So these are the six active channels, but we will be receiving eight channel data right now on the PPM signal. How I know that? Uh, I decoded it using Arduino as well as logic analyzer, but I won't be showing that in the video right now. So next in the RC industry. we have three major value of pwm pulses uh, you can see that it is 1 millisecond 1.5 millisecond and 2 millisecond so this is a pretty much standard in the rc industry but 1 1.52 what does that mean and what is the period of this particular signal it's 20 millisecond or 50 hertz so the signal will have a 20 millisecond period in that 1 millisecond 1.5 or 2 millisecond would be the amount of time the pulse would be high so depending upon your servo if it's a position based or it's it's a rotation based servo if it's a continuous motion based servo depending upon that the particular uh, pulse would be affecting its operation so in case of a position based 1 millisecond will give 0 degree 1.5 will give 90 degree 2 will give 180 degree in case of rotation it will depend upon if it's if it's anti clockwise or clockwise or it will stop the motion something like that we would be using new clue f446ze from stm32 or st microelectronics sorry stm32 is the chip so we'll be using this particular new clue board Uh, next moving on to the stm32 cube id we will be setting up the timers timer 2 would be set up in input capture mode at channel 1 and the pin that would be defined for that would be pa0 you can have a look at the pin out diagram available online easily next uh, the apv1 timer clock which eventually gives it to timer 2 is set to 84 megahertz and you can see the prescaler and counter arr values 
accordingly next for pwn generation timer 3 is utilized on that pinout would be pa6 and you can have a look at the prescaler and counter for that as well so two takes could be done for you know capturing this ppm signal one could be interrupt based and a timer counter second could be input capture so i'll be going with input capture mode that it's pretty simple we, our main clock is at 84 megahertz our prescaler is at 840 so eventually the timer clock that we have available with us is 100 kilohertz which gives us a period of around 10 microsecond okay so after every 10 microsecond our timer counter will increment by one okay now next we have our input ppm signal so the interrupt would be on the rising edge okay remember this rising edge so suppose the first signal comes in the rising edge hits and up, up until the next signals rising edge is uh, i mean interpreted till that whatever the counter value is based on this counter value multiplied by one counter value is 10 microsecond so based on this we calculate what is the time period of this uh, pulse so this is the method suppose say your pwm signal for channel one is one millisecond wide based on 10 microsecond counter value how many counts would be there that would be 100 right so this is the basic logic you have a certain period after which you count and you have the period for which you have to count right both are separate input signal is separate and internal clocks counter is separate so this is the basic calculation after that next for pwm generation we have the same apv1 clock as the main clock 84 megahertz prescaler 84 our new clock would be 1 megahertz and we'll be counting up to 19999 so eventually doing some calculation it gives us a 50 hertz period or 20 millisecond period and if you put 1000 1500 or 2000 value directly into the ccr or capture compare register you will have a pw of 1 1.5 and 2 millisecond respectively lastly we will gather all the components together and based on the schematic or circuit diagram we will be connecting it together ultimately we will have a practical so let's first have a look at all the components let's talk about the component connections we have a simon 30 ampere esc with a back it outputs 5 volt 2 ampere roughly and we have our fsi 6 ab receiver so we'll be connecting this back output directly to fsi 6 rc3 channel you can use any channel channel 3 channel 4 whatever you prefer next we have a lipo battery and we'll be connecting it to our PDB or power distribution board. So the ESC will be powered from this PD PDB as well. Uh, we have our Nucleo F446ZD. This Nucleo is getting the PPM signal and ground signal from FSI6 receiver. And we have our servo motor. So servo motors is operating with the 5 volt and the ground and a pwm signal is also transmitted from the nuclear board next we have our transmitter which is fly sky fsi6 and it connects with the receiver the nuclear is powered through a micro usb as you can already see so this is the schematic or basic component diagram you can connect as already stated here all right so in the 
so don't forget to you know enable the ppm output on your flysky transmitter also uh, right now what we have done is rc1 channel is the one which is operating the pwm signal of servo motor so you can see that in the video as we move the joystick in the rc1 channel direction servo rotates from its mean position since the rc1 or the joystick one is always in middle state so 1500 or 1.5 millisecond is the default signal that has been sent on the servo when we move it left we are going 1 millisecond when we move it right we are moving to 2 millisecond so that is how the servo is reflecting so thank you and don't forget to subscribe the channel like and share this video that would mean a lot thank you